need all this stuff to clean and season your cast iron. Does it really work? Is it worth the money? Does any of it work on carbon steel as well? I don't know, but today we're going to find out. Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. You know, the other day I got hold of my wife's credit card, got online and did a little bit of shopping, and look at all this stuff. It's like Christmas morning for cast iron. I got soaps. I got cleaning kits. I got oils. I got this stick thing. I got brushes. I got chain mails. I got these pucks of wax. You know, it looks like something my dad might have used to shine his Sunday shoes before church. Is any of this stuff worth it? Is it worth the expense and the money? This is well over $100 worth of stuff here. Is it worth it? Do you really need this stuff to maintain and clean and season your cast iron skillets? And also, does any of this stuff work on carbon steel as well? Hell if I know, but today we're going to find out. Now here's what we're going to do. Quite simply, is just take some messy skillets. Thankfully, my wife left a few of these out. And we're going to clean them, touch up the seasoning, and maybe completely re-season a few and see if this stuff works, if it's worth the money. Let's get started. There's going to be a little jumping around today because I used all of these products in various combinations with many different pans, but I want to start with the cast iron soap by Karen and Doucette and the two chainmail scrubbers and a shongle and a ringer. I started by using all of these to clean a mess of messy pans. A 12 inch lodge cast iron skillet that had day old bacon bits and grease. A Debouillet Mineral B Pro Carbon Steel, which had day old stuck on steak mess. Then I had my own sausage fest, so to speak, and cooked four pans of Jimmy Dean. Also some steaks and burgers. Used the chain mails and cast iron soap to wash pans full of stuck on sausage mess, several carbon steels, a grill pan, stuck on burger mess, and a few of these multiple times as I cooked other things. Then I sat there and rubbed a chain mail back and forth on my Debouillet carbon steel omelet pan just to see what it would do to the seasoning. After cleaning all of these with the cast iron soap and both chain mails, here is what I know. First, I really like the cast iron soap. I think it provides a good middle ground between harsh dish soap on one hand and the only hot water never soapers on the other. It has a nice scent. It cut through the grease without stripping the seasoning from my pans and I have officially incorporated it into my cast iron and carbon steel cleaning routine. I give it a thumbs up. Second, for the chain mails and carbon steel, I found that if I swirl the chain mail around 10 times or so, the seasoning is just fine. If I started rubbing one spot with light to moderate pressure, after 80 to 100 strokes, I could see the bare metal. So using them a little on carbon steel is okay. Using them a lot will eventually damage your seasoning. Third, on both the cast iron and the carbon steel, the chain mails work best as the initial blast to remove big stuck on chunks but not fine details. After that, you need to hit the pans with a sponge and some of the cast iron soap for a total clean. Now the Ashongle has slightly bigger rings than the Ringer, but both did well removing big chunks of stuck on food. Now I found that these work better in conjunction with another product. For example, they really do a good job when it comes to taking off big chunks of stuck on food, like meat, like sausage, like leftover hamburger. They do a great job of powering those away. But then I had to come in with a sponge and some soap to give them another good wash to get the remaining amount of food out of the pans. Now, interestingly, I cooked some sausage in the Moviel carbon steel skillet, and there was a bunch of stuck on gunk in the pan. And I tested the chain mails versus the brushes. And it turns out that even though the chain mails are metal and seem to be harsher, they actually work better on the carbon steel than the brushes. And the reason for that is this, is these things are very powerful when you have some stuck on sticky bits it only takes a few strokes to get those to release from the pan. Whereas with the brushes, they're not quite as powerful and I found that I had to sit there and really just scrub the heck out of the pan to get those sticky bits out with the brush. So the brushes, oddly enough, ended up taking off some of the seasoning, whereas the chain mails really didn't damage the seasoning at all. 
only because it only took a few strokes with the chain mail to get all the gunk out. Now, as we saw in the earlier test, when I sat there and rubbed the chain mail back and forth on the carbon steel, yeah, if you rub it enough times, it's going to damage the seasoning. If you just want to swirl this thing around a few times and get the big chunks out, they actually work very well on carbon steel. Okay, I want to take a moment to opine on brand names. I think Ringer is an excellent brand name for this product. It's made of tiny little rings. It's a normal word that's used slightly out of context, which makes it a lot more memorable. People bring in ringers to solve problems. This is an excellent, memorable brand name. Contrast that with the Ashongle. A, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing Ashongle correctly. B, when I look at it, I can't tell if the word is spelled correctly. It almost looks like a typo. When it comes to brand names, Ringer wins hands down. Now these are both good chain mail scrubbers and I give them both an unhesitating thumbs up for functionality. When it comes to a memorable brand name, I just bet people are going to remember the Ringer. Now on the value front, these Ringers are about $15, $16. You can contrast that with the good old steel wool scrubby ball. I get these 16 in a pack for about 10 bucks, so about 60 cents a piece versus 15, 16 bucks for a steel wool scrubber. So they're not that great of a value. However, we're kind of pan fanatics around here. This is a little bit more of a nice to have, a little bit of a luxury item, and I do enjoy having one. So it's a little bit of a splurge, not absolutely necessary, but very nice to have. Also, I would point out that I bought one for my mom, <laughs> mentioning mom again, but she's been using her cast iron for 50, 60 years, and she now uses her ringer every time she cleans her pans. Okay, next I want to take a look at some of the seasoning oils, sprays, and waxes. I'm going to start with the Crisby Stick and the Buzzy Wax. These two have a common ingredient, and that is beeswax. Now, the Crisby Stick has beeswax in combination with soybean oil and palm oil. The Buzzy Wax has beeswax in combination with canola oil and grapeseed oil. And to test these out head-to-head, -head, what I did is use them both on the same pan. So I took the 12 inch lodge cast iron that we had just cleaned, made sure it was clean and dry, and I seasoned the left half with crispy stick and the right half with buzzy wax. Now both of these products are solids at room temperature, so you have to use a warm pan so that the products will melt and be able to be spread around and rubbed in. So I heated the pan, took a towel, rubbed on some buzzy wax, almost like you're going to shine a pair of shoes, rubbed that all over the right side of the pan, rubbed it in really well. Then for the crispy stick, you actually take the stick and rub the stick on the pan. So a little bit of that melted off and then I took another towel and rubbed it in really well. Then I seasoned the pan in the oven. Then I repeated this seasoning process another three times. Okay, and after seasoning this pan four times in a row, using the Buzzy Wax on the right side, the Crispy Stick on the other, I can tell no discernible difference between the two products. I think they both work very well. The seasoning came in nicely on the bottom of the pan. It's a nice, shiny, dark, hard black. We cooked some burgers on the stove top. They browned up really nicely. We cook some cornbread in the oven. Here's the pan right after releasing the cornbread. No sticking on either side. So I think they work very well on cast iron. The next thing I want to do is try them out on carbon steel. So what I did was take the nine and a half inch debouillé that I had just scratched with the chain mail, applied a light coat of the buzzy wax, and did a quick maintenance stovetop seasoning. Got the pan up to smoking. I thought that shiny spot darkened in a little bit, darkened in kind of nicely. And the next thing to do to test it out was the proverbial fried egg test. So I heated up the pan, in goes the egg, and boom, look at that thing slide around. To do a similar test with the crispy stick, I used this 11 inch or so Moviel pan. Now this one I had nuked for a previous video, so it didn't have quite as much seasoning on it as the uh, debouillé. I melted on some of the crispy stick, did another stovetop seasoning, did another egg test. 
and boom, nice sliding around. So even though this pan didn't have quite as thick a layer of seasoning as the Debouille, the crispy stick still did very well and the egg slid around perfectly. And I note that the irony is not lost on me that I've done a bunch of videos about carbon steel skillets and showing people how to remove that initial coating of beeswax from their pans. Now I'm adding beeswax back. But I gotta say that the beeswax in combination with those other oils seems to work pretty well on carbon steel. So the buzzy wax on the right side of the lodge cast iron and the crispy stick on the left, no discernible difference. They both did a great job on cast iron. They're also both dual use products. They work on the carbon steel as well. I'm gonna give both of them a thumbs up. Both of them between 10 and $20, decent value. The one note I would make here is that the puck form is a little bit less messy than the stick. The stick, when you rub this around a hot pan, it leaves a little bit of melted wax that kind of gets gunky on the cap. But Crisby makes this exact same product in a puck form. So if you try the Crisby, I recommend the puck rather than the stick. Okay, next up is the Lodge Seasoning Cast Iron Care Kit. It comes with several items. The centerpiece is the Lodge Seasoning Spray. A couple of notes here. This is not any kind of fancy exotic oil. If you look at the ingredients, it's 100% canola oil. So in the raging debate over which is the best oil to use to season pans, just know that Lodge has weighed in with canola oil. Also, this can is under pressure. I was kind of expecting it to be a little spray pump, but it's under pressure, almost like a can of Pam. The only note there is that you have to be a little bit careful when you apply it to not overshoot. It's got quite a bit of pressure in it. Now to test out the Lodge seasoning spray, what I did was do some maintenance seasoning on a 10 inch Lodge cast iron skillet and also a Lodge 8 inch carbon steel skillet. Touched up the seasoning, did the fried egg test, and boom, slides around really nicely in the cast iron, and boom, also slides well in the carbon steel. So the Lodge seasoning spray, unsurprisingly, works well with Lodge carbon steel and cast iron skillets. Imagine that. Now the kit also comes with a brush, a scraper, and a heat resistant silicone handle protector. I found that I actually used all three of these, so that makes the kit a pretty good value. I only wish I were a little bit smarter. Inevitably, I heat up a pan, start cooking, grab it, burn my hand, and then I remember, oh, I should put on the silicone handle protector. Then again, I tend to drink a lot. So at about $13, I think this kit is a very good value. The spray works well on cast iron and carbon steel. And I do get some use out of the other included items. I use the brush, the scraper, and the silicone handle. Good value, I give it a thumbs up. Okay, now I occasionally take a little bit of artistic license when I describe my wife's cooking, or her cooking. Well, the other day she decided to make these lettuce wrap things, except for with cabbage, kind of like a P.F. Chang's lettuce wrap, but kind of not. Sounds great on paper, unless you go away and accidentally leave your enamel Dutch oven on the stovetop and boil it absolutely dry. So let's take a look at what's inside and see if we can clean this up. Woo! Oh Lord. It's like a truck stop restroom in there. But now you see why my wife doesn't really mind if I get online and buy a few extra pan cleaning supplies and kits. For this one, for this cast iron enamel Dutch oven, I went with a Lodge cleaning kit. Comes with a bottle of cleaner, a brush, a scraper, some little lid protector things. But we're really going to put this thing through the test. I took this horrible burnt on mess and I tried to use the included scraper to scrape some of it out. It was really just fused to the surface, it was burnt on there, it was stuck on. The scraper didn't work at first, so what I did is just fill it up with hot water and some dish soap, let it soak for a while. Then after an hour or so, I came back and I hit it again with that scraper, and most everything came out. 
Then I used the included brush, gave it a good scrub, and then I washed it out well with a sponge. I dried it, and then I used the included enamel cast iron cleaner. I squirted some in, I rubbed it all around with paper towels, with a sponge. I did this three or four times. Now I've got to say that unfortunately I'm a little bit disappointed with it. Now there's no doubt that the surface of the Dutch oven is very clean. All that gunk is gone, it's smooth to the touch. But I'm a little bit disappointed that the cleaner didn't really take off any of the stains. Now this is actually about a 10 year old Dutch oven and the more you use these things, the more stains are gonna pick up. But I was really hoping that this enamel Dutch oven cleaning kit would really kind of take away some of those stains. So what I did is get out another Dutch oven. This one is a Lodge. It's about five years old. It's just got some light staining at the bottom. I thought this might be a little bit easier test. So I repeated the process used the, the cleaner, rubbed it in, did it a couple of times, and it got a few of the stains out, but really it did not get all the stains out. So even on a little bit lighter mess, this Lodge kit, it gets the Dutch ovens and enamel cast iron clean, but it does not remove all the stains. So for the Lodge cleaning kit, I'm not sure the value is there. It cost over $20. And really, the results are produced, I'm not sure they're that much different than you could achieve with dish soap and a scrubby sponge. So unfortunately, the Lodge Enamel Cast Iron Cleaning Kit, I give a thumbs down. Okay, next up is this cast iron flax oil. Now this one's a little bit more difficult because I'm on record as not liking flaxseed oil, and I've done videos about this. I don't like flaxseed oil when it comes to seasoning carbon steel skillets, particularly the flaxseed oil you find in a grocery store. It's inconsistent, you don't know what you're getting, you don't know if it's out of date. People follow the directions for seasoning to a T, yet still have problems. Yet I still get email from people who swear by their flaxseed oil and their seasoning method. So when I saw this specialized flaxseed oil specifically for cast iron skillets, I thought I'd give it another try. Now this came packaged with a free ebook about seasoning cast iron. And I gotta say that that ebook is not really worth your time. It's not what one expects from a book. It turned out to be nothing more than a nine page PDF file with some very, very basic information stuff that you probably already know or at least could find for free on the internet. So I didn't like that free included ebook. Not really worthwhile. Now for the oil itself, I used this Amazon Basics 10 inch cast iron skillet to test it out. Now that skillet I had reviewed previously, I didn't particularly love it. I had some trouble with some egg sticking. I had also almost burned some of the seasoning off when I used it in that induction burner test. That burner went crazy, got way too hot, burned some of the seasoning off. So I thought this would be a pretty good test. You know, if this flaxseed oil can bring this pan back, then it'll do what it says it's gonna do and maybe I'll kind of change my opinion on it. So this Kit Cast cast iron flax oil says to season your pan on the stove top at least four times. They say to wipe a pan with oil, bring it up to the smoke point, wipe it out again, let it cool, and repeat that process. So I did that four times with this Amazon Basics cast iron pan. Then I did the fried egg test. And I'm here to admit that the eggs actually slid around better after seasoning that pan with the flaxseed oil. Then I moved on to using the oil on a carbon steel skillet. Now I took the Matfer carbon steel skillet, my beloved Matfer, the one I nuked in a previous video, and I seasoned it three times in the oven with this flaxseed oil plus two additional seasonings on the stovetop. So five seasonings with this flaxseed oil on my carbon steel skillet. I did a fried egg test. The egg, it slid around just like every other egg we've tried today. But when I flipped the egg over, it was the only egg out of the bunch we've done today that stuck on that second side. So after I flipped the egg, it stuck a little bit. In every other pan I've tested, in every other oil and wax I've used today, that didn't happen. 
Now, when I washed the pan later, I noticed that when I got that stuck egg out of there, it pulled a little bit of the seasoning off. So after multiple seasonings with this cast iron flax oil, it didn't do a good job seasoning my carbon steel skillet. Okay, the Kit Cast cast iron specialized flaxseed oil, it's okay. It did not convert me to being a fan of flaxseed oil for the carbon steel. I still had problems with it. Um, I can't fault it too much there because it doesn't claim to be a carbon steel oil. It claims to be a cast iron oil. However, it did an okay job on the Amazon Basics pan, but I still don't like the sheen and the feel of the seasoning produced by the flaxseed oil versus the beeswax products or the Lodge seasoning spray. I like these better in terms of value, in context, these products are all dual use products. So the Buzzy Wax, the Crispy Stick, the Lodge, the Karen and Doucette seasoning oil, those are useful on cast iron and carbon steel. This flaxseed oil only works okay on the cast iron. So with all that said, I'm gonna give the Kit Cast cast iron flax oil a hesitating thumb sideways. It did okay on the cast iron. In every other respect, I found it just a little bit lacking. Okay, the Karen and Doucette cast iron oil. It came with the cast iron soap. What I've been using this for is my protective oil. So if I have a well-seasoned pan, I cook in it, I clean it, I dry it. Then I've been using a couple of drops of this oil as my protective oil. Wipe it all around the pan when it's clean and dry. Protect from rust. It works on the cast iron. It works on the carbon steel. My only very, very minor hesitation with it is it has a hint of a scent to it. Now, I have not been able to pick up any off flavors in anything I've cooked. I just don't want to get too much scent on these pans. On the other hand, I'll say that I bought some of this for my mom. She's been cooking in cast iron for over 50 years, maybe over 60, but don't tell her I said that. And she uses this every time she cleans her cast iron skillets now. So I can't say much more good about it than that. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the brushes and the scrubbers a little bit more. To test those, I used this disgusting, evil cast iron grill pan. Now, I would say I have a love-hate with this pan, but really it's an all-hate. I despise this pan. Why do I have it? Why do I use it? Well, here's the current state of my barbecue grill. If it's winter time and I'm going to cook a steak on the stovetop, and for some reason I absolutely have to have grill marks, I use this pan. Now it puts grill marks on the steak, it cooks a good steak, but the downside is this thing is a beast to clean. You got all these ridges, all these grooves, stuff gets stuck down in there, it's very difficult to clean. So what I did was cook a couple of steaks, chow down on them while the pan was cooling down, and then I ran some hot water, used some of the cast iron soap, and gave each of these brushes several grooves to try and clean. Now what I found is that none of the brushes did a great job on this pan. This pan is victorious, it defeated all the brushes. Even after scrubbing and washing this pan, when I dried it, I still got gunk coming off. I went back and repeated the process with the chain mail scrubbers, they really didn't get down in those grooves very well either. There was still some gunk on there. I washed it again. I used the steel wool. I washed it again. I used the sponge. Finally, after four washings, I finally got this thing clean. So this grill pan is evil and it defeated every cleaning product that I have. It took washing this thing four times and I'm still not 100% sure it's clean. I despise this pan. Now that being said, let's take a look at the brushes. I ended up liking this Lodge brush the best. It fits well in the palm of my hand. If I need to get a little pressure and really scrub something really hard, it's easier to get a little weight behind it, whereas the one on the stick, it's a little bit more unwieldy. You have to use a little bit more torque. I don't like that. Plus this one is too big to use in something like a Dutch oven. It just doesn't fit very well. And then the Oxo Good Grips. I had high hopes for this one. It turns out that it has this little tip, and when I run it down the ridges in this pan, 
notice how it hits the side and really prevents the bristles from getting down into the corner of the pan. So I found this one to be a little bit disappointing. I'm gonna give the OXO Good Grips a thumbs down. The Lodge brush on a stick on the longer wooden handle, I also give it a thumbs down. It just is not usable in a lot of bigger pots and pans. Now the little Lodge it fits well in the palm of my hand. I can get some pressure behind it if I need to really scrub the heck out of something. This one, I give a thumbs up. I like this one. Okay, if you love your cast iron, if you're a fanatic for your carbon steel, hopefully today's video gives you some ideas about a few products you might want to try, maybe a few you might want to avoid. Now, if you've got experience with these products, if you have others you recommend, other techniques for seasoning your pans, please feel free to share those below the video. If you found this video helpful and entertaining, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Thank mm -hmm. you.